Welcome back everybody. So today we're going to go ahead and begin the wireless chapter. Now, what are we going to do here today? Well, the very first thing that we that I was planning on showing you was how to utilize Aircrack in combination with the GPUs in your PC in order to accelerate the cracking of the VPA, VPA2 passphrase. You can use the CPU, which is considerably slower by orders of magnitude than the GPU for this purpose. So we're gonna go ahead and perform a capture. So we'll capture a handshake between a device and an access point. An access point is your wireless router and a device can be pretty much anything that can authenticate to the wireless access point. Uh, it can be a phone, a laptop. Uh, these days it can be a it can even be a refrigerator for crying out loud, but oh well. And we're gonna basically, what we will do is start, scan the area, then select our router and select the device that is connected to that router. We will deauthenticate that device which is connected to the router. And once the device actually attempts to re-authenticate, we will capture that handshake that occurs. And then we will actually take that handshake and begin the cracking process by using the acceleration provided to us by the GPUs. Now, I understand that no, that people don't have GPUs just lying around doing nothing. Uh, I personally have three GPUs in my, in my PC. One of them is used for the host system, that is the display wall graphics, basic from Fire Pro series from AMD. And it's basically designed to just plug in as many monitors as you can. It basically has six mini display ports, which is awesome. And I can plug all my four monitors into it. The other two graphic cards are Asus manufactured from NVIDIA. They are GTX 970s. And I primarily use them for gaming. So I have passed those two graphic cards to two different virtual machines on which me and my friend play some games. Uh, what I'm going to do today is repurpose those graphic cards. And uh, if you don't have them, just sit back, relax and watch, see what happens and how it goes. You can perform the same type of an attack with a CPU, although it will be considerably slower. But I did, I did want to show you how you can use the GPU acceleration for this purpose. And today I'm going to repurpose them. I will pass both of them to a single machine and both of them will be utilized by a single machine where the cracking process will take place. Now, uh, the very first thing that we need to do before we go about installing the crack, uh, messing around with the MAC addresses, etc., we will need to confirm that our wireless adapter, that our wireless card can actually be used for this purpose, that it is compatible. So the very first thing that you need to do is type in IF config to see if you actually have a functional wireless card, and I do. So it's listed right here. Your name might be a little bit, uh, okay. Uh, your name might be a little bit different, but I seem to have two of them. One from my, uh, one from my PC and the other one that I've actually plugged in. Now the, the one that I've actually plugged in, well, why did I do that? Because the one that I already had was completely incompatible for the purpose. Therefore, I had to plug in another one. I've tried a lot of things uh, with the one that was already there. As you can see, LSPCI, uh, LSPCI, what was the name? Yep, grep network. Sorry, ignore case. As you can see, it's Broadcom Corporation BCM4360. Now this absolutely is incompatible for the purpose at hand. So I decided not to actually use it. Rather instead, I've decided to use the one that I've actually plugged into my PC. I've just bought another one USB somewhere from eBay. They're pretty cheap, so they can be acquired. So you can see it here, LS USB. And it should be somewhere around here. Uh, it's Realtek. Yep, there we go. So Realtek Semiconductor RTL8188RU VLAN adapter. So that's the one that I've plugged in via USB and that is the one that I will be utilizing. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and clear the screen. Well, actually, let me just go ahead and show you how you can run this verification. You just basically do this listing LSUSB and take the chipset. So just go ahead and copy it. And now I would like to ask you to open up Firefox or whatever browser you are using. And you can go over to air crack hardware ability. <clears throat> And it should be the very first link that pops. You can just keep on scrolling down. And here you're going to see a lot of them. So it says Atros, ATM, EL, Centrino, and the other ones. This is real text. So let me just go ahead and control F and do this. Okay, so real tech 818. Yes, yes, unstable driving patch required. Okay, but which one do I have? Uh, 8188, so, okay, it says RL8185, 8187. I know that it's supported even though I can't find the listing here. I know that it's supported because I have tried it before plenty of times. But even if your card is not actually listed here, uh, it's fine because, I mean, it's not fine. It might work and it might not work. So keep that in mind. Uh, there is a, you should be able to find additional information on this site, but it's not, like, it's not, it's not the definitive list of what works and what doesn't work your card might still work regardless. As you can see, mine is not listed here. I swear it was listed somewhere around here, but it doesn't matter. I've actually uh, went out onto the forums and asked in regard to the compatibility. And then I have basically confirmed that it works. And so when I've confirmed that it works, I have, uh, I have bought it and I have installed it. So once you have confirmed that it works, if it's not listed there, if your chipset is not listed there, try going out onto the forums and asking people whether a certain card will work. Now, don't ask me whether that card will work because I genuinely do not know. I don't know because I don't have the card to actually test it out. But somebody on the forums might actually have tried something with that card and they can tell you their experiences. It does work or it doesn't or it partially works. If it partially works, that's a pretty bad thing for you. <laughs> Don't bother with it. If, uh, if only in the case that people have confirmed that it's working, use it. If they, if, if it's not, then you're bound to encounter a ton load of errors. Anyway, let's go about installing the aircrack. So just type in DNF install aircrack dash ng. And Dependencies resolved, nothing to do, it's already installed. Uh, yours won't be, so for you the installation will go through, eventually it will ask you to say yes or no, you can just type in Y for yes. And the next thing, the next tool that I would like to install is Mac Changer. So Mac Changer, yes, I would like to install it. And this shouldn't take a long amount of time, it should be fairly quick. So there we go, installed, Mac Changer, complete. Why are we installing the Mac Changer? Well, your devices, your wireless devices, your network devices, pretty much all these devices all around, they have their own unique Mac addresses by which they can be identified. So you definitely, I mean, generally, you would want to change your Mac address so that the trace wouldn't lead back to you in general. Although if somebody is, for example, performing the triangulation at the time of your, at the time of basically somebody doing something funny on the network, they will be able to determine the position of the person doing it within four square meters, which is not extremely helpful, especially if you're at a bar full of people who are all using laptops. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you wish to change the MAC address, you can just type in MAC changer dash r and let me just do this i have 
config. I'm actually not sure which one of these is it. I'm pretty sure it's the first one and not the second one. They can be recognized by the MAC addresses. These are the MAC addresses here embedded. So MTU 1500, 100. Uh, oh well, we'll see. One of them will work, one of them won't. I purely doubt that you're gonna have more than one wireless card in your machine anyway. So we'll get to that point in time. But if you type in Mac changer dash dash help, you will get a large listing of options here. Well, maybe not that large, but it, can print the MAC address and exit, and that's what we're going to do. So which one was it again? Just show. You will need to specify an interface, of course, so VLP, uh, the, so VLP 14S 0U, V14S 0U2. And there you go, it actually gives the current MAC address, which is the one that is displayed, and the permanent MAC address, which is the one placed there from the hardware manufacturer, and this is the one that I actually need. As you can see, it actually is able to identify the manufacturer and the type of the device by the, by the MAC address. So this one, it says Alpha. Uh, that's the Alpha wireless adapter that I got from the eBay, but if I type in the other one, VLP, 10s0. It doesn't actually know the manufacturer. I don't know, maybe because it's not listed or something like that. It's Broadcom, but probably just doesn't have the MAC addresses in the sheets. Okay, so uh, we are going to use the dash R, which is the random flag. And uh, could not change the MAC address interface up or insufficient permissions, device or resource busy. Well, that's perfectly fine. We can just type in if config. I'm just gonna use this one, the, the depreciated command, VLP 10S, uh, 10s0, because I really don't feel like learning the new one and I don't like the formatting. I did want to, I mean, I know how to use it, but uh, the IP, and it does give advantages over if config, but for you, I figured that the best output format would be given with ifconfig so that you could see things a little bit clearer on the screen. So 14S0U2. Uh, this is the one that I wish to change, not the upper one. Okay, <laughs> I need to use it with the Mac changer, sorry. Mac changer dash R. And it cannot change it because the interface is up. So let's go ahead and type in if config VLP 14 S0U2 down. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, enact this change. And there you go. It says permanent Mac is blah, blah, blah. And the new Mac is this one. So you have successfully changed it. If I type in if config, uh, up and I can just type in the listing for this address and as you can see the back address has effectively been changed and altered here so that is the very first step that we are going to do here aside from the installation now the next thing that we need to do is just type in airmon dash ng and press enter this is going to give you the name of your wireless card. So here it says uh, Broadcom. I don't need that one. That's the first one. I'll actually disable it in BIOS because it's completely useless. And I have uh, this one, which I would like to use. So you get this is the this is the name of the device. So we're going to be using that one. And if we want to basically uh, be sure that no other processes will interfere, and we do want to be sure that no other processes will interfere, we need to type in airmon ng check. Oh, we got quite a bit of processes that might interfere, and this is nothing, uh, nothing strange. You will have this as well. Now you can you have the PIDs here, so you can do manual kills. Just type in kill, and then the PID, or you can do uh, check kill. And this is 
gonna help you in some cases, but more often than not, it's actually not gonna do much for you. What you need to do is actually manually kill these. So 97, 41, uh, 97, 47. Don't, don't, don't miss the numbers. You might kill a process that you don't want to kill. So just make sure. And seven, four, nine. Okay, perform a check one more time. Okay, no interfering processes found. Once you once you start the manual kills, make sure to kill the network manager first. Uh, don't worry about uh, killing these processes just by rebooting the network. System CTL restart network. This should be fine to bring everything that needs to be back up, back up and running with this command, or you can just reboot the entire system. Okay, now that we have established that uh, our the name of our wireless card, the that we have actually killed all the interfering processes, changed the MAC address to increase our anonymity level, we are going to basically begin the scan process next and then begin the capture process. And that we're gonna do in the follow-up.